Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a simple parametric staircase model in Grasshopper for Rhino. In this video I'm going to be creating a staircase to span between these two floors here. I'm going to be using Grasshopper to allow the staircase to become parametric in the way that I can adjust its length, its height, its width very easily and all of the attributes of the staircase will follow any of those small adjustments I make. Now in order to begin this tutorial I'm just going to create two points which are going to mark the top and the bottom of my staircase. To do that I'm just going to go to my toolbar here, use the single point to create a point at the bottom of the stairs which is going to be on this first floor here and then we'll make a second point at the top of the stairs here. Now we can move these around later but they're going to basically be the only bits of geometry I need in my Rhino space which we're then going to bring into Grasshopper to allow Grasshopper to parametrically design the staircase in between these two points. Now from this point we're going to then load up Grasshopper just by typing in Grasshopper into our command line here and opening it up like so. You might need to go far and hit new document to create a kind of blank space to work in. Now I'm going to use this menu, we'll just hover it over on the right hand side while we're working here. Now the first thing we need to do is define these two single points in our Grasshopper file. To do that we're going to use the point parameters here to collect these pieces of data. So I'm going to create one here, we're going to right click on that point, we'll go set one point and we'll click on the base point here. We're also going to just right click and just call this bottom just so it marks the bottom of our staircase. Then we'll create another one, do the same thing, set one point, click on the top piece and right click and mark this as top, like so. Now you can see these have been added because we've got little red crosses just over those dots now and if I select each of these they'll then go green marking each of those points in our table. Now the first thing we need to do is define how many steps I'm going to have between these two points. To do that I'm first going to find the distance between these points and then I'm going to divide that by the kind of height of, that I require for each of my steps. So to do this we're going to use a distance node. We can find this just by double clicking in the space here, typing in distance and using this distance node and then between our A and B we're just going to plug the bottom point into A, the top point into B to find our distance there. And there we've got our distance of 3000 millimeters. Please note that I'm using millimeters for this tutorial. You can use meters but any of the figures you use when kind of obviously defining the length and width of your staircase will also need to be in meters as well. I found millimeters is sometimes slightly easier for this when working with staircases because we can be a little bit more specific about how we define the length, width and height of each step. Once you've got that distance, we then need to decide how high each of my steps are going to be. To do this, I'm going to be using a slider, which means I can then adjust that height of my step as I go along. So we're going to create a new slider just by finding it in the parameters tab here under the input node. I'm going to right click on that slider and go to edit here. We're just going to call this height and we're going to set the minimum height of my steps to be about 150 millimeters and the maximum to be 250 there like so. For the range I'm going to do it so it's not sort of rounded to point decimal places we're going to keep it as whole numbers there so we're just going to click on this end to round it to whole numbers and therefore my slider will kind of go up in increments of a millimeter between 150 and 250 like so. So there we've got our height slider. Now in order for this to sort of work with the distance between these two points I'm then going to take my distance and I'm going to just divide it by this height. So we're just going to use the maths parameter here. We're going to go division and we're going to take our distance, plug it into A and then we're going to divide that by the height in B. And this is going to give us a number here. Now at the moment you can see if I hover over that result it's defined as 20 but if I go to sort of 161 as the height you'll see that number will become a sort of like 0.8.634 there. Um, that's not a very nice number if we're thinking about it as whole steps. Obviously if we're creating a staircase we don't want 0.6 of a step to be at the end of our staircase so we're going to need to round this number up as well to give us a nice even set of stairs moving between these points. So what I usually do once we've got this result and I'm going to double click again type in round here to create a rounding tab plug in that and this will round our number 
both to the kind of nearest number, one to the smallest and one to the kind of nearest large number as well. I'm going to be using this C option here. We're going to be rounding the number up. The reason for that is if I've kind of got a height here and we've set it to the maximum, what this will mean is if we round it up, it will always kind of make the step slightly smaller than this number here. We don't really want it bigger just in case our steps suddenly become really elongated and a bit too large. So you always want to use the largest number here when you're rounding to then kind of create the height of each of our steps. So that's essentially how many steps we have in our file here. Now, in order to then set this out as sort of equal points between this, we're going to use another tab. I'm just going to double click and we're just going to type in divide like so. And we're going to use this kind of divide curve option here to divide a curve into equal length segments. And our segments are going to be denoted by this number here. So we're going to click on our divide curve and the number we want to define, the number of segments, is going to be set by this C here. So we're going to just plug that in. Now, in order to get this option here, the curve to divide, we can't use this distance because this isn't actually a line connecting these. It's just a measurement of the distance between these two points. We're going to actually need to create a line between these, which we can then divide up to give us our points that kind of set out each of our steps. So to do that, we'll just double click again, type in line like so, choose the line option and connect these A and B again to create a line, as you can see here on the left, that connects the two together. Then with that line, we can plug that into this node here, into the curve, and then it will divide this line by our kind of rounded number of steps here. And there you go. We now have exactly 12 steps noted by each of these points here. Now you'll see, because we have this slider, we can then round this up and down. And depending on whatever number we put here, it's always going to round it. So we've got a whole number of steps here. So this is essentially the height of each of our steps and we can go up and down depending on how many steps we need. So that's the sort of first step. We've defined the height of our stairs. Now we need to define the kind of length and the width of our steps as we move forward. So what we'll do is I'm just gonna click on this node here. We're gonna hit Control C and then Control V just to copy and paste that. We're gonna edit this one. We're gonna call this length. And then for the minimum maximum, for the length, I want this to obviously be a bit wider. So let's set it to 700 millimeters to be the minimum length and 1,500 for the maximum. Hit OK. And then we'll just do the same thing. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And we'll call this one depth. And for this, we want the minimum to be a bit more than this. We'll say 250 for the minimum. And let's say the maximum is about 400. Now, where I'm getting these values from, um, you can look up sort of uh, depending on where you're based, you can look up kind of staircase standards in your country. Um, for the UK, it's sort of around these values for the kind of heights of the steps and also the sort of width and the depth. But it's up to you really what you can like base it upon your kind of regional standards or if you want to have a little bit more control, you can also play around with these values. The nice thing with the sliders is we can always go back and change these and adjust these as we move forward as well. So these two are going to control the length and the width of our stairs here. So what we then need to do is start to create our steps. Now to do this, we're going to use the rectangle tool. So I'm just going to double click again, type in rectangle and we're going to use the two point rectangle here. So we're going to draw these steps out as rectangles at first and then we're going to kind of adjust the length and the width of those and then make them into extruded boxes to create our stairs. Now, also with any of these nodes, you can always find them up in these tabs here. I kind of prefer just searching by double clicking and searching in there slightly easier than looking through all the menus. But depending on how you like to use it, you can find all of these options also up in the menus up here. So for this rectangle, you'll see the inputs we require are the kind of base plane. We require a first corner of our rectangle and then also the second corner. So what we can do is we can actually take these points, which are each of our step points here, and plug it into the base plane, which will give us the starting area of our rectangle. And we, you can also plug it into point A, which will give us the starting point. Now you'll see it's already made a rectangle because it's kind of got a preset value for this B. It's kind of 10 by five. Now that's sort of just based upon what it thinks we might want the staircase to be, but I really want to be able to define exactly how big I want my staircases to be. 
So we're going to be using these nodes here to help define that. Now in order to create this second corner of our rectangle, which is essentially this corner that sits on the opposite side of our first corner here, we need to take this point and we need to add a length to it and a width to it, which is our length and depth here, in order to create the second point. So to do this, we're going to use these vector tabs here. And we've got this sort of construct point and deconstruct point we can use to create this. Now, this is a little bit involved, but I'll take you through the kind of basic steps of this. So we're going to use the deconstruct point first. We're going to take our point here, which is each of our initial points of our step, and plug that in, oops, into P. This will break it into an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate there. Now, the X is going to be our kind of width, the Y is going to be our depth, and the Z we can keep the same. We can just leave it as it is for now. Now, in order to input these values into these, we're going to need to use a little bit of maths to kind of essentially add whatever this value is. We're going to add on our length to it, and then that's going to create our new point. So we use the maths tab. We're going to use the addition. We're going to take this. We're going to plug in the length, like so. And that's going to give us a result here. Then we're going to go back to our vector. We're going to go back to construct point and we're going to put it all back together. So essentially we're breaking these points down into each of their coordinates, we're adjusting one of the parameters, and then we're building it all back again into a new coordinate here. Now we need to do that for both the X and the Y. Now sometimes with these it's quite hard to know which one should be the X and which one should be the Y. So we're going to do it with these two first. Oops, make sure we take the right node. And then we're going to check to see if that's correct, and we'll build it together. So here you go. So what this has essentially done is, if you see here, we've now got these new floating points here. The rectangles aren't linked to them because we haven't connected it back up just yet. But what you'll find, if we just move around in our Rhino file, is if we adjust the length, our stairs are kind of getting longer there. Now, I think what's happened, as you can see, as we said before, they're the wrong way around. So always good to just double check. I think I've got my X in my Y and my Y in my X. So we'll just reconnect those back up like so and let's just move them so they're in the logical place there we go okay so you can see here as we adjust the length the length of the steps adjust as we adjust the depth the depth of that step adjusts and then if we take this point and plug it into our B here our rectangle adjusts accordingly as well so you can see here that we've got all of our steps. If I want my steps to be longer, we can extend them there. If I want them to be deeper, we can extend it there as well. So we've now got kind of full control over our steps. And the nice thing with this is as well, if we then change the height, all of these change as well. So the great thing with this process is because it's all parametric, it's all linked back to these two points. So we can change any of these figures and they'll always kind of connect back together. So now we've got all of our steps, they're stacking up nicely and we're evenly breaking them and distributing them along the line. Obviously at the moment, they're still going only vertically. We've not got them moving in that diagonal motion. So the next thing we need to do is actually offset them diagonally so they're kind of stepping up correctly in the right direction. Now to do this, we can actually use this depth of figure here to create that sort of diagonal length. Obviously, we don't want the steps to overlap one another, so this depth, essentially, if we take that number, times it by the number of steps, that will give us the distance of the whole length of our stairs across the whole thing. So, let's do exactly that. We're going to use the multiplication. We'll just do it down here. We're going to take our depth. We're going to times it by the number of steps, which is this rounded number here, to give our result there. And then to create the sort of length of the steps, we're essentially going to use our sort of bottom number here. We're going to add this to that point there to create the kind of length of the step, which will then extend this point along and move all the steps along accordingly. So again, to do that, we need to use the vector tab again. We're going to deconstruct the point like so. We're going to make sure 
that this time we're going to put this in the right place so I'm just going to check the depth is linked into that X tab so we're going to take that X we're going to use the addition here we're going to add on this amount like so which is our kind of new point and then we're just going to construct that point back again Make sure as well, actually, I use the bottom tab. It's actually the top point we need. We're going to move that top point along. And once we've got that new figure, we're then going to input that back into the line we created here. So move it up like so. And essentially what I've done there is all I've done is I've taken the depth, I've timed it by the number of steps to give me that distance, and then I've just moved that top point along here so the line I've made, instead of going top to bottom, is now going along by a distance as well. You'll see if I change the depth, that will automatically adjust. If I change the height, it will kind of work along there as well. If I change the length, that will also adjust. So they're all connected together. All of these are linked up. So each of them are kind of depending on one another and will adjust accordingly to one another as well to create our stairs. Now the last thing we need to do is just give some depth to these stairs to actually kind of give them some thickness to the steps and to do that we're going to use the extrude command so we just type in extrude here, extrude there. The kind of profile surface we're just going to use this rectangle here and for the depth we just need a kind of height of the depth here which we've actually already got in our height parameter. So in order to actually kind of take that and input that in we need to turn it into a vector again so it needs to know that it's going to be a z coordinate that we're giving it so we use the construct point we'll take the height put it into the z and then put it in there and there's our particular height and you can see again all according they'll sort of all adjust in accordance with one another that'll extend and they'll grow so that was just a quick way of creating a parametric staircase in Grasshopper for Rhino. Now the amazing thing with this is everything goes back to these two points. So if we take these two points in our Rhino file and I move them, the staircase will move accordingly. If I make them taller, the staircase will adjust accordingly as well, adding in more steps along our parameters here or taking them away if we make it lower as well. So it all kind of adjusts together. So whatever kind of stair you need, if you need it to span between two points, once you've made this, you can then apply this to any number of staircases in your design and it will quickly create a staircase for you. You can always go back, tweak the parameters as well in order to kind of adjust these to how you need. Um, you can also use this to help create handrails. You'll notice that this line, this diagonal line here, is this part here. We could take that line, we can offset it, give it a thickness, and that will create a handrail for us as well. So we can use a lot of these components that we've already made in order to kind of add new features to our stairs and adjust them even further as well. But for this tutorial, we're gonna finish up here as this is just the sort of building blocks to create a simple parametric staircase for use in your files. Now, once you're happy with this, obviously it's still in Grasshopper at the moment, we can't select it, but once you're happy, you can just right click on your final extrusion, hit that bake command, hit OK there, and it will bake it out as usable geometry, and then we can move it into our scene like so. Now obviously I moved the point slightly so it doesn't quite line up, but that essentially is how it works. So I hope you found that video useful. Um, obviously with Grasshopper it sometimes is a little bit of a learning curve to get into, but usually it's best to just start with simple things like this, play around with some of the parameters, see how they work, um, and then I think from there you'll find that you can start using it more and more to speed up some of your workflows that you're already doing in your files. So thank you for watching this tutorial, and if you want to watch any other videos on 3D modeling tips or rendering in Rhino, Grasshopper and V-Ray, please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.